Welcome. This is a small demo on how to get and play World of Warcraft 335 on Steam Deck, and how to use and configure the inputs as you please. Any World of Warcraft version should work on Steam Deck, using Proton compatibility. I chose Warmain's Private Wrath of the Lich King server, as it is the one I am casually playing on. To download the game, go to Warmain's website and get the Magnet URL for your preferred version. If you have troubles trying to open up the Magnet URL directly on Steam Deck, you can download the game on your PC, then archive it and copy it on the Steam Deck using SyncThing, or using a flash drive. After the archive is copied, unzip it. Afterwards you can add the game in Steam Client, as a non-Steam game, together with any custom art you want. After the game is added, go to its properties and change the compatibility to Proton. Don't forget about add-ons, as long as they work for the version of the game you're playing, they will work on Steam Deck as well. Speaking of which, in this video I will be using the add-on called Bartender, as you will see. I have created a new character for this video, and for this character I set it up the add-ons and also the Steam Deck inputs. Be aware that the presented input layouts are just experimental, you can create and use whatever layout you want. My personal opinion is that this game is still best played using mouse and keyboard, but playing it with Steam Deck's controls can be fun. Checking the inputs, you can see that I have created two action sets, the only difference between them being the right trackpad, as you will find out. But first, let's start with the joysticks. The right joystick is used to move the camera. This is done simply, by setting the stick as a mouse, and also by assigning a right mouse click action when the stick reaches an outer ring area. The outer ring area is set to a minimum. This way, every slight movement of the right stick will trigger the right click action. The left stick is used as a directional pad, with the WASD keys assigned to each correspondent direction. I have also set the L3 command to be the auto run toggle. There are other commands assigned here that I'll cover, like up and down D-pad keys, which are set to mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down. But first, the most important things are the action sets. The mouse trackpad layer, enables the right trackpad to work like a mouse. The default profile changes the right trackpad to be a 3x3 grid, with each cell representing the inputs from number 1 to number 9. I have placed the trackpad grid position on top of a 3x3 action bar. The action bar is configured through the bartender add-on, with each cell being triggered by numbers 1 to 9. Moreover, the bar has three different pages. Pages number 2 and number 3 are accessed through shift and control keys, which are assigned to the left and right trigger. I have assigned two back buttons, to switch between the trackpad mouse action layer, and the default input set. The left trackpad is set to a 2x2 grid, each cell having the F2 to F4 keys assigned. It is being used to select party members. One of the differences between the two trackpad settings, is that the actions on the left trackpad are triggered at trackpad push, while the actions from the right trackpad are triggered at trackpad touch. I have done this to avoid selecting party members by accident, and to avoid clicking continuously on the right trackpad when using spells. I have tried an easy dungeon with my level 80 Shaman Healer and the party selection through the touchpad, and even through Steam Deck's touchscreen, worked very well. Other thing on the side, are two macros, one for attack, the other for clearing targets. I assigned them to a hidden bar, and mapped the A button for the attack macro, and the B button for the clear target macro. In spite of Steam Deck's very customizable input layout, there are a few drawbacks here. The biggest one is the keyboard. Chatting with other people is not the easiest thing to do with a given keyboard.
there are some other drawbacks, but they are smaller in comparison. One of them is the camera movement using the right joystick, with the presented layout. Because a left mouse button click is triggered, you have to be careful when you move the camera around, as you might select unwanted targets. Or you can move things assigned to taskbars. To avoid these, you have to make sure the cursor is on you, or at the edge of the screen, before you use the right joystick. Another drawback, is that you have to keep in mind which profile are you on. Once or twice, I was trying to use some spells, but ended up moving the cursor around because I was on the wrong action set. However, these smaller drawbacks can be fixed using other configurations, as you will see. The minor problem with changing the profile, can be avoided, by assigning only one back button to change the profile layer when that button is held down. I did not use that here because it meant holding a button continuously if I wanted to move the corsos around, or if I wanted to use the skill bar. But for now here are a few seconds of gameplay with the presented configuration. Let's set up a new configuration, to avoid the inconveniences I mentioned, and to see how easy the controls can be changed. I am thinking of assigning the skill bar actions to the back buttons only, and leave the right trackpad only as a mouse. In that way I no longer have to manage the input profiles, and I also can use the trackpad for camera movement. Now of course, I can assign the skill bar actions to A, B, X, Y buttons, but I already did that in the past and I wanted to see how the new configuration feels like. First. Let's set the right trackpad to behave like a mouse. Then, we must map the back buttons to number 1 to 4. Afterwards we change the layout of the skill bar to match the new input configuration.
Now, let's give this new configuration a go. With this configuration you still have three different pages of skill actions, but only four inputs. I could have added other buttons here, like A, B, X or Y. Or I could even use the right joystick for at least other four inputs. But for now, considering even the possibility of macros, these inputs are more than enough. I will leave a Reddit link in the comments, to a post that might help you start with these configurations. That post is for controller support on PC, but it can be a starting point for configuring Steam Deck inputs as well. In conclusion, the configurability of the Steam Deck inputs, brings a lot of potential. You can change everything as you please, with the biggest drawback being the keyboard for chatting purposes. But, at the end of the day, this is playable, and considering the deck comes with a high-quality built-in microphone, and that you can install Discord or even use Steam Client for voice chat, you can always be ready for World of Warcraft on the go, especially with the game's power consumption, which, when checked, I had a battery life of approximately 4 hours at 80%. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching it.